Well, hello there humans. This is a little bit of a sponsored video. So before we kick off the video proper, uh, I want to thank PUBG Mobile for giving me the opportunity to turn up tomorrow and give away a Samsung Galaxy S9 phone on the PUBG Mobile official YouTube channel. You too can be hopping, jumping, dancing and prancing on the top of the school with a smoke machine going off in the background, the techno music blaring and all the loving innuendo you can get your hands on. All you've got to do is turn up to the stream. It's on the 17th of September at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time all the way through to 10 p.m. There's going to be three solo chicken dinners. I'll be giving out the custom room number and the password. You enter there, you win the custom room, the third custom room, the third and final map, and you will receive a Samsung Galaxy S9. So get up, get up and get rowdy. I look forward to seeing you there. Make sure you turn up in your hundreds, your thousands, all the humans. And until next time, stay safe in the battlefield. And now, this is the normal video. Enjoy. Oh, yeah, before we do, you need to download the game. Download the game. Dude, it's not hard. Download the game. If you've got the game, you can play in the custom room. You win the custom room, you get a phone. Bye. Well, hello there, human hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it to you, big dogs, welcome back to channel. It's been a wonderful week here at the uh, channel. We've had nearly 3,000 new subs, and we've kicked up to just over 5,000 subs in the last 28 days. So tickety boom, keep it going. Let's have a talk about pace of play. What I want to do today is talk to you about taking what the game gives you, not forcing the action, learning how to read the game a little bit better. And to do that, I'm going to show you a game I played recently in solo versus squad in arcade mode. It's obviously one of the best training modes you can have, and it's a really good way of basically putting good processes into your gameplay and then using them in ratings battles and other situations where it's a little more clutch. One of the things I love about playing a little bit dirty and using your brain is you use the other guy's hit point pool. Like you saw that engagement there. That was me coming into the side of a, an engagement that was already going on and getting involved. This engagement here is just brute forcing it. And there's nothing subtle about that. There's nothing uh, that's particularly clever about that. That's two blokes going hit point trading. I shoot him, he shoots me. Whoever gets the most headshots wins the game. And one-on-one -on -one is a great way of saying, hey, I'm the best. Like, come 1v1 me, bro. I, I'll take you anytime. But it's really not the way to go if you want to rate highly and be smart about the way you play. This is how you want to run your engagements. You want to take very, very little risk and get maximum return on your investment. Now, I am in the middle of a lot of firefights here. But for all that... There's not a whole lot that I'm doing that is dangerous. I'm not really putting myself at risk here at all. You can see this poor grub above me that I knocked. He's not getting any joy. I'm just going to clear him now with the good old Winchester. Uh, and then I'm going to go and loot his crate and, and work the magic on that guy to the north. I've only really had one engagement where I've been under any kind of threat or pressure. And that's fine as far as I'm concerned. That's how I want to run the game 90% of the time. I am very aggressive by nature uh, when it comes to playing games. I'm, I like to take the path of least resistance, but at the same time, I like to have a bit of fun while I'm doing it. So I'm not a big fan of just sitting down and never engaging targets. But the best way to win the game is to kill people and not get killed in return. And to do that, you need to read the game better. So what I'm looking at here specifically is the minimap. I'm watching for sound on the minimap. I'm watching to see where gunfire is occurring, who's engaging who. And that's what I've been doing the entire time. I knew there was someone up there in that area there. I'm just waiting for him to turn up. Uh, they're finally coming down behind me now, but I don't notice that. I actually missed that. So hats off to him, but I do hear him in my headphones. And so rather than hang around and take the engagement way back there where there's a chance we both get eaten by the zone, I move all the way up here and, and fail miserably to get over that pipe until I'm in the zone and then I wait for him. And I play the game a little bit smarter rather than a little bit harder. And that's reading the game. That's making good decisions based on the processes and the information that the game's throwing at you. Now, I know that behind me is cleared. I have taken out six people so far, and the zone has pushed all the way up here. So in front of me, there's five people, and all the contact seems to be 
far to myself, like way down to myself. And that's fine by me because I'm way out to the north and they can neck each other as far as I'm concerned. This is something that not a lot of people really think about. Uh, there's, and I've got to be honest, if I'm in a edgy kind of mode and I want really good first person footage where I'm just going up hard against it and pushing into really dangerous firefights, that's great. I would push hard down south now. If I really want to get the chicken dinner, what I'm going to do is let those squads work each other over. Right now, they're burning resources while I'm at the back of the map. I'm not doing anything. I am literally doing nothing. They are trading knocks. Now, you might have seen in my recent stream, I was in a situation with a squad where I was knocking a lot of people, but I didn't get the win. Uh, it was the Sanox stream where I was playing on Friday with the, uh, the patrons. And because I was just trading knocks, both my squad and the other squad got wiped by the zone. Trading knocks is basically, there's still six people left alive. And you've seen on the kill spam, there's been a couple of people knocked while I've been sitting over there looting. I'm getting stronger. They are burning resources. I am picking up more loot. They are going through med kits. It's just such a simple thing. And it's not very, very difficult once you get this and build this into your game to let people just work each other over. Now, I'm using a Groza and an M416. Uh, I've done a lot of testing, and I'm going to say the best gun of these two is the M416. You've, um, I'm going to be doing a full AR test breakdown. It's going to be really, really in-depth, so look out for that on channel because there's a lot of myths out there that need to be busted with regards to the ARs. I'm as bad as an exploit for perpetrating a lot of them, but for all that, um, good information and solid information is pretty important. Now, you can see these guys are going backwards and forwards on the roadway. I'm in the middle of the zone. All I've cared about is clearing the space around me and staying safe the whole time. And rather than bleed out for the sake of getting kill shots, what I'm going to do here is put pressure on both sides of the circle. So you can see I've let that guy sit there knocked. There's his mate. He's just behind that ridge line, trying to get a headshot, but he's not actually visible. It's, it's not rendering looking out to see if there's anyone else there, I don't need to get the kill. These guys are going to have to come up through that zone. The guys on the right and the guys on the left, or the guys to the east and the guys to the west, as they say in uh, in terms of the compass, are the trouble. The guys behind me, if there are any that I'd really like, here they come. It's not important for me. I don't need to be the one clearing these guys. I'm going to go down on the ground. They're going to come to me. It's not desperate for me to actually kill and knock all of them, I'm only going to take kills that I can reasonably get without exposing myself. I'll take a shot. No worries. Just reload. Wait for it. There's still another guy down there on the right. I'm not going to clear that knock. It's not important. I go back down. They're both engaging. Cool. I'm actually using the guy on my right to help clear this guy on my left. And then they all go down and there's just me and this one other bloke left. And guess what? He's down the bottom. I'm above him. I'm much happier with the situation I'm in than the situation he's in. You can see him right down there underneath the uh, railing. And we're going to just take our time and clear him. And that's pace of play. That's using what's available in front of you. Uh, reading the map. Letting teams duke it out. Not trading knocks. Not worrying about killing people so much as letting the zone pressure them. Letting two sets of people get squeezed into one choke point in one area. They're really good concepts and they're things that you want to be putting into your play to improve. I know that they're not things that were native to me and natural when I started playing PUBG Mobile. They are things that came to me after a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, thought and watching my own videos and seeing where I was going wrong and what I could do to improve. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Stick around.